All right. Every week. Focus, Every please. Week. What we're going to do today is on differentiating the exponential function and look at some of its application. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is going to derive how we differentiate exponential function, but really, I don't think uh, I don't know how you'll be examined in uh, exam or test at all. So the first bit of it, you really have to pay attention. Just think about it. So what I'm going to do is differentiate the functions y equals e to the power of x by first principle. Then use the property of d dx, e x equals to e x, to differentiate the other forms. All right. Then differentiate the function of the form uh, y equals a e to the power of f x plus d. And when it is non-linear. Uh, when we have non-linear fx using the chain rule or composite function and then finally solving some problems. All right? Now, let's have a look at differentiating f of x equals to e to the power of x by first, first principle. You know that e, the Euler's number, is just an irrational number. Uh, so it could be 2 or 3, but just e, 2.718, all right, or 781. And it's just like pi. So we know we can use the first principle, limit h equals 0, where x plus h, f function of x plus h minus fh divided by h. So substituting x with x plus h, I've got e to the power of x plus h minus ex divided by h. Now, let's factorize it and take the ex out. All right? It's going to look familiar like what I showed you yesterday. If I take the EX out, really, this we have, there's no effect to the limit because that's just a number. All right? We are talking about limit h to the zero. We're not limiting, limiting x, we're limiting h. All right? So let, let's, let's leave that and concentrate on that well, one. If you make everything Remember zero. what I did yesterday? Yeah? yeah? What does that equal to? One. One. All right, let's do something. This time, what I'm going to do, I mean, you've seen this, we did a bit of it yesterday. So if I put in one, if if this time h really approaches mm. zero, what happened? I'm I'm working from the other way now. I'm putting this at e, instead yeah, of yesterday, I put a number. So keep going until it gets to really, really small, and e, this limit, h approach zero, e to the power of h minus one equals to one. So therefore, therefore, differentiating fx equals to e to the power of x by first principle, we know that same thing. Uh, we get the same thing, which is e to the power of x. Oh All right. So, generalization. Mm -hmm. The gradient function of f of x equals to e, yeah. equals to e to the power of x is actually the same as itself, e to the power of x. <laughs> so, by linearity properties of so derivatives, the double derivative. if so I derive the e to the power, the a e to the power yes. of x, we still get the same thing, a e to the power of x. All right? Happy That's with that? Mad. So basically, you need to know this. The first derivative of e to the power of x is the same as e to the power of x. <coughs> the first derivative itself is the same as uh, the function. Now, let's have a look at a, tran a horizontal translation. All right, when we've got y equals e to the power of x plus or minus c, what does that mean? Horizontal translation. What sort of translation is that? Horizontal. 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 How does it affect that? <coughs> Moving left or right. right or left. If it is positive, it moves left. negative. Right. 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 Okay. So if I rewrite it as that, I've got y e to the power of x e to the power of minus c. So if I derive that, here you know that this is just a number, correct? e to the power of c, that's a constant, it's just a number, right? So, 
using the linearity property, e to the power of c, we leave that as a, uh, as a coefficient, and differentiate e to the power of x, mm. I get the same thing. So therefore, mm. differentiating that, horizontal translation plus or no, minus it's like c, like you get the same, you get the same differentiation. differentiation. What about the vertical translation of keep it plus or minus t? It disappears. Do we, what would happen to that when we <laughs> differentiate that? Disappear. disappear. It will disappear. So, this is what we get. dy dx of e to the power of x plus t, you get e to the power of x. Makes sense. <coughs> right? Okay. So, I want you to focus what you notice when there's a translation. Let's have a look at the next one. Now, can you differentiate y equals to e to the power of 2x using product rule, please? Can you try that, please? Using product rule. I want you to use product rule. How do I split e to the power of 2x? e to the power of 2x into two products. Which, use your index law. Which is that, correct? Can you try differentiating e to the power of x times e to the power of x, please? Using your product rule. 2 e to x. What is your product rule? Yeah, 2. Product rule is uh, fx yeah. equals to g to x times hx. Alright, we've got first derivative of fx is g g dash x, x h of x, x plus, plus h dash x, x g x alright correct so what can you observe what happened in this case what happened in this situation see if you use the product rule you've got e x times e x so if you if this is g x is h x so i take the first derivative of that which is e x times that and then i take the first derivative of this e x times that so therefore you actually have e to the power of 2x plus e to the power of 2x and what do you get 2 e to the power of 2x so what can you do what do you notice when there's a horizontal dilation? The 2x is horizontal dilation, correct? Okay? Yes. So what happened is, you actually have to differentiate that as well. Alright? You differentiate 2x and it became 2. Alright? Mm -hmm. Let me explain it a little bit. Bit of a power rule type thing. This time, can you actually differentiate it using a chain rule, please? What is the chain rule? Chain rule is uh, dy dx equals to dy du times du dx. All right, that's the chain rule. So if I can substitute fx as u, what would happen? Let u equals fx. What is du dx? What is a uh, dy du. You have dash x. Yes. So it's, it is f, f dash x. So here now I've got y equals to e to the power of u. All right. So you do know that dy dx equals to dy du times du dx. And therefore dy du is e to the power of u times f dash x. Now let's substitute fx back into u. And now we get f dash x e to the power of f not dash, that should be just fx. Oops, sorry, that should be just fx. Alright, that f <coughs> the dash shouldn't be there. The dash shouldn't be there. Alright, let me get rid of that. That shouldn't be there. Alright. So, 
let's generalize it. So the gradient function of y equals a e to the power f x plus d is actually a times the first derivative of f x, which is e to the power of f x times the whole thing as well. All right, that was what I showed you using the um, chain rule just now. Any question before I move on? No? We'll show you some examples, then you'll know what to do. Alright, keep going. Now, can you try the following, uh, di differentiating the following function, please? So first, y equals 5 e to the power of x. What would happen to dy dx? When f, do I have to differentiate the 5? That's just a coefficient. We don't have to differentiate that. We differentiate e x. That is e x. So the whole thing will become that. Can you try b, c, d, e, and f? next week. Differentiating trigonometry next week. Trig function next week. Hmm? Now, for part E, pi is just a number. That's all. Pi is just a number. Ready for me to show you the answer? Uh, wait, so. so for the second one, you need to derive minus x, the function minus x. So it became minus 1, correct? So minus 1 times 2, minus 2 will give you 2, and then e to the power of 1 minus x. Not much change with c because differentiating x plus 1 is just 1. Then the next one, differentiating 4x minus 2 is 4. So it's 4 times e to the power of 4x minus 2. Pi, pi x, differentiating pi x is just pi. And we drop the 1, we don't have to uh, differentiate the um, constant. And finally, the last one, if you have to, you just need to go through. Easy. So minus 4x, differentiating that, you get minus 4. So it's minus 4 times e to the power of minus 4x. Then differentiating 2x to the power of 3 is 6x squared. And then differentiating e to the power of 1 minus x. Differentiating minus x is minus 1. So therefore it's minus e, 1 minus x. Alright? Happy with it? Yeah? Let's go on to the next one. Alright, example 2. Can you determine the exact value of uh, the first derivative of uh, fx with x equals to minus 2? Exact values. You need to be able to differentiate 1 minus x squared. Alright, you need to be able to differentiate 1 minus x squared.
conditioning is on like max. Yeah, no. The oil is number. All right, how do you differentiate one minus x squared? That is two x minus two x. Correct. Yes. So, what would happen to here? Uh, what would happen to the first derivative? Negative four x. Well, I really did not ask you to simplify, but you can. It's minus four x e to the power of one minus x squared. Correct. Wake up, guys. Yeah. Wake up, guys. All right. Now, we can, do we can substitute minus 2 in, which means I have got minus 2 times minus 2, which will give me 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Then <coughs> minus 2 square is uh, 4. 4, which means one that's 1 minus two. 4 is minus 3. And I think I made a mistake. Yeah, I'm putting oh six. That should be minus three. Do we need to use class buttons? Yeah, that's minus three. Yeah, that's better. Alright, that's minus three. Yeah, F dash, F dash. Minus three, not minus five. What did I put on minus five? Oh, yeah, they're all f dash on the board. So you also need to put a dash on the f f dash x and f dash negative three. All right. Any question? Negative three, sir. Negative three. Negative three. Thank you. Do we have to like use class band for that? You don't have to. This is exact values. You'll be expected to do something like this in um, calc three. In calc three. All right, let's move on. All right, can you determine the exact equation of the tangent line to the curve below when x equals to one? So what is the tangent line? You need to find the gradient, correct? So to find the gradient, you need to find dy dx. You also need to find y. And if I were you, I will actually rewrite this one. I'll rewrite it as e to the power of minus square root of x or e to the power of minus x to the, to the power of half. So that you can actually differentiate that bit. Makes life just that bit simpler if you look at it that way. All right? Rather than using radical. I always like to write it in terms of power rather than our radical. So I work out dy dx by actually differentiating this. All right, differentiating this is minus half x to the power of minus half. Do you all agree with uh, my answer? Yeah. Minus half. Very good. Let's have a look at uh, try the next bit. What? That should be plus or minus. And that should be plus. That should be plus. That should be plus. That should be plus. My fault. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
can't believe I went from like linear equations in like year seven to this. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. <laughs> if a year seven comes in now, they're gonna go, huh? Yeah. I went from year seven algebra to complex numbers. Yeah, do, you, do you know when you hated algebra? No. <laughs> no. I never hated it. Hate it was always algebra. easy. You I never hated three like plus two Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, it was it was S, brother. <laughs> it was pretty I struggled. That's <laughs> <laughs> the easiest to math ever. I hated no. like the start. statistics. That's what I hated. You have to put in x equals one. You know that minus one to the power of half is one. So it's e to the power of minus one. All right? Minus half, x to the power of minus half is one. So it's minus half e to the power of minus one. How is it minus one? Sir? Isn't it one half? Sorry? Isn't it one half? One to the power of half. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Alright. So, Jerry, that's with me. Therefore, the gradient N is minus 1 over 2E. Yeah, see, that's not right. Alright. I make myself, I make it, make life a little bit easier by just dropping the minus 1 and bring E down. Alright. If I made it negative 1, then it would be R. It's just a little bit easier for me in that sense. And then, yeah. you know what you need to do next? You need to find y when x equals 1. When x equals 1, that's just only 1 over e. Because substituting x in, e to the power of uh, square root of 1 is 1. <coughs> so now you've got x and y, you should be able to work out the equation of the tangent. Remember y minus y1 equals to yeah. m x minus x1. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, of course, like I said, if you like, you can use y equals mx plus c, but I generally find this a little bit quicker when I want to look for the equation, knowing the uh, gradient, knowing two points. I find that, or one point, I find that this is a little bit quicker, in my opinion, anyway. All right? So, if you substitute that in, y minus 1 over e, which is the y coordinate, is minus 1 over 2e, which is the gradient, times x minus 1, when x is 1. Right? So, therefore, this is the equation. y equals to minus x over 2e minus 1 over 2e. Again, I would say... Look at the question. That question may ask you to find in a different yeah, form. Of the word. <laughs> so the question asks you if the question asks you to um, give the equation in the term in the form of ax plus by equals to d. You know what to do. Multiply everything by two e. So therefore, you've got two e times y plus x equals to minus one. All right. You can do that. It depends on the question. It depends on what you are asked to do. Sir. Yep. Wait, can you check my working? Ah, uh, just give me a minute. Oh, sorry. One last example, I'll check your working. One last example. Let's try this. Try this, please. Jerry, did you get that? What happened when, when the line crosses Y in the set? What do you have? X equals zero. X equals zero, thank you. When x equals to zero, what happens to this? What happened to the power? One. 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 All right, very good. So you know y equals to e to the power. When x equals to zero, y is one. All right. That's one. Yeah, zero plus one. Hence, find the equation of the tangent line at the point where the function passes y axis. That's the coordinate, zero e. Oh, e. is it? Yeah, mate. You sure? Yeah, mate. Isn't it one e? No, because it's the y intercept. <laughs> you need to yeah, find the gradient in this case. Find oh, dy yeah. dx. Yeah, yeah. but if a normal one, it's one e. Find dy dx. You put one there, which is ex. E to one x, it's just one. one. Yes. What? 
isn't it? Oh, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> what are you saying? What were you yesterday? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess like this. And then you go to the air. And here it's zero one. And then it. Oh, and an actual graph. Yeah, yeah. And then it's one. Yeah. yeah. See? Yeah. Mm hmm. Because yeah, either the power of one is E. What? Brother. Zero. E to the this power of one is E. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 This is bullets, bro. Yeah, yeah, That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I agree, bro. Yeah. We, we guys. It's E. One last tomorrow. example. KFC tomorrow. Bro. Please. No. <laughs> Sagus is coming, come on. <laughs> yeah, <he's laughs> All right. If I find dy dx, dy dx, what I've done is actually differentiate this bit first. X plus ex. Differentiate that, I have got, oh, got two e. oh my goodness. 1 plus ex because yeah, differentiate x is 1, differentiate yeah, ex is yeah. ex. Gotta be humble, come on. Get the equation. I don't need to expand or anything, I just leave it like this because when I substitute x equals to 0, I know e to the 0 is 1, so therefore that's 2. This 1, 0, that's 1, e, so therefore you got 2e. So you need a gradient at that point. So that you, you can find a gradient. The first derivative. Now, you know the gradient, you know the then you do y, y coordinates, e. x and y coordinates. E. So you can therefore find the equation. C is E anyway. Isn't C just E? Yeah, mate. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Is it right? right. I think it's right. Yeah, it's 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 right. Let me check. Oh, yeah. Point. So can you go back as well? Wait, hang on, let me finish this. So, yeah, I got the point one, one over E, and then just the last part when I'm finding C, I got the wrong C. Simple mistake, man. It's from the gradient. What is the common denominator? It's too deep. Why is it too easy? 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 Alright, so this is how I work it up. Y minus E is 2E, X minus 0. Therefore, Y equals to 2E, X plus E. Just one minute. Alright? Now, I'm going to stop here. You should have some exercises to do. This is what you get uh, in the waste formula sheet. Alright? And, like I said, I'm going to stop here. Yay!